So they're painting our outside of our house today. I'm way down here before I started the video because I'm still embarrassed to film in front of people. Whoa! Hello, sweet girl. How are my friends? Huh? Hi friends. Uh, hi pepperoni. Hi Chinuggy. Hi Zelly. Y'all are on the wrong side of the fence. Yeah. Hi Parker. I need to come out here and check the fence. The last couple of days I've come out like after I put them up for the night and the fence has been down and it's not down when I leave in the morning. I haven't had the charger on, so I don't know if one of the babies is sticking their head through. And they're like pulling it out of the ground, but it's been in a weird spot for them to be doing that. It's very windy today, but this is like the third day in a row. So like during the day, somehow the fence has come undone. Out here checking. I check every morning, every night because this stuff pulls up, especially because we have so many deer this time of year kind of roaming. But where it's been undone, it's on so I don't really want to touch it has been over here and then the fence gets all stretched the net gets all stretched out so this was down the other day and it was all wrapped up in this branch I don't really know if there was like a deer that was trying to eat these little berries or what but could have been from over here but like it was all wrapped up in this branch it's all fallen over and pulled up and then Padme got out on Sunday and the neighbor was out here working and it was uh, this one that was out. So it's been like right here in this little area, which makes me think it's a deer that is getting in it when the net is not hot and knocking it over. Now I check in the morning, but it is really dark right now when I'm out. So two big turkey vultures circling like right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Both these guys. I've seen both cats. There's a piggle taking it out but I don't really think it's confused and thinks that's a carcass. I guess something could be dead in the road. Hi, Nuggy. Hello. Say hi, Mama. Do you have cookies? Mm-hmm. The Mama doesn't have any cookies for her, Nuggy. Mm, sweet baby. So it's just been kind of strange. It's probably just deer, but still. Padme actually escaped and the neighbor called and was like, hey, she's out. We put our dog up and so you can come get her. And of course, the minute that I walked down here, she hopped back over the fence, but it was like, it's just cause it's knocked over. And again, it was really cloudy and rainy. It had been off and now it's been on for several days, but I do cut it off at night because the battery is kind of wimpy. I guess they're just knocking it over when it's off overnight when they come through. Because like this morning, Duke was standing like right where Bean is and didn't want to come in. So my guess is that they were a deer out here, but it's very dark. Hello, are you happy to be back with your buddy? Stinky McStinkerson. Say it yes. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. I let them back out together Sunday, Monday, because they were ready to be out. With Poppy being bred, I waited until Poppy was out of heat before I let them out because I, right now the only couple that we should have probably going to strong enough heat to mess with them is Bunny or Tink. And that'll go on for another month, but then they should kind of settle in for the winter. And rut should be over, hopefully. Everybody else should be bred, so we should be done. Hello! Who is this sweet boy? You have been a very snuggly man lately. You have been. I'm the snuggliest man there is. <laughs> sweet boy, sweet boy. We are getting to where it is dark really early. So like right now, 6.15ish is when I'm coming out to put them up at night. And of course, after time change this weekend, that will be 5.15. So we are getting into hay season. So probably this weekend, I will start putting hay out at night for them. And the reason that I do that is basically because there's not enough time for them to graze. There is still like plenty 
plenty of grass and we'll walk for them to eat, which encourages them to stay out and graze. It is all pretty much dead and dried out. We do have this one little spot right here where it is still pretty green that I haven't left them on that we probably will eventually just open the nets all the way back up. So they have this whole block all winter, but I kind of want to see how much of this they've laid down or trampled down so you can see. I don't know, you guys probably can't tell. I can see where they bit the tops off this stuff. It is still really thick, but there is nothing green left. It is all dead. So keep them busy. I don't know if they'll eat it. They're not gonna be able to like eat it down, but like I couldn't even walk in here three weeks ago. May get the tractor and the brush hog out here eventually and just kind of cut it all down. There's no real reason to do that over the winter because it's not gonna grow any grass. If we think it's gonna grow some winter grass, we can cut it down and let the winter grass grow up. There's not a lot of nutrition out here this time of year but it does keep them busy and so we'll start giving them hay at night to eat so that they're not only eating basically between like 8 a.m and 5 p.m because they are hopefully most of them are pregnant and need a little bit more nutrition to grow those little babies they're pretty happy it is super dark in the morning when i do morning chores and we are not quite into feeding twice a day as far as grain goes is it hot? It's hot, mama. Yeah. Hi, did you come on the other side of the fence? My little pocket princess. Hi, best friend. It's hot. It's like almost 80. I'm way overdressed. And no precious bunny. No. The neighbor did say that our other net is in their trees under a bunch of debris. So there are only two nets here. Fair enough. Hello, pepperoni. I'm going to say hi to everyone. Say hi, Chai Nuggy. Mm, oh, yep. I think you got a little bit of mama's hair in your mouth. Parker. What do you think, Miss Ma'am? I'm a good goat. Getting close to the time of year where we're gonna have the supplement for everybody. We need to kind of go walk through the boys' pasture. Are we in a place where we're ready to separate them for the winter? It is just the beginning of November. And what I have to do is when I'm keeping these pigs and goats together is over the winter, they cannot be in the same pen because the goats need hay. And what Tuni and Pork Chop will do is turn the hay feeder over and steal all the hay because they're mean. Also supplement the bucks with loose minerals over the winter where they usually just have a mineral block in the summer and the pigs cannot have the loose mineral because they can get sodium poisoning from the salt. Pigs can't have a lot of extra salt so the protein tubs are usually fine and the mineral blocks are fine because the pigs can't really, they don't lick them, they'll bite them but for the most part it's not a huge the protein tubs especially are better, but they will eat all of a protein tub and they will eat all of the loose mineral and it'll make them sick. So I have to separate them for those particular reasons. Pork chop, is your nose itchy? Yeah? You're just sneezing. <laughs> you were, you were just sneezing. Oh my goodness. You're a chatty piggle. You smell. Are you chatty? Can I help you? Yeah? Are you super duper frustrated? What's wrong, buddy bro? Yeah. Man, life's hard. That sounds terrible. I wonder what he is complaining about. He sure is complaining. So can't keep them together, but we need to kind of check the grass level to see if it's time to start supplementing these guys. They shouldn't be very interested in me. This one will be. There's a lot of thick grass here, but they don't eat right here for whatever reason. I think because 
like I don't know this is not the preferred grazing area for them how I kind of tell when it's time to start supplementing the pigs at night is when they start to dig up the ground so that basically tells me there's not enough nutrition left in the ground for them in the grass and so they're turning the dirt over looking for grubs and fun things to eat this is still really really thick grass pretty much everywhere. There's not as much dead on top of it like there is out there. It's very green and long. The goat don't need anything else and I would rather keep them here as long as possible. And there's two different pens up here. So if I've never explained why, the goats have to go in that top pen, not this bottom one. The goats will eat the hay and be happy. I've never found anything for the pigs that they will just eat and not turn up the ground in the winter when they're hungry. Last winter they did not turn up the ground because they had all of this area all winter long, which was great because we had the nets. So they didn't dig. In years past they have dug a lot in the winter because there's just not enough left in the ground for nutrition for them. This is the pig house. So it's smaller, you can kind of see how this is a bigger door than this one. Pigs need something warmer. They have way more trouble regulating their body temperature than goats do. Goats really just need something dry and out of the wind where pigs really need to be warm. And so we pack that little house with straw and the goats are fine here. Also, like I said, the goats will eat the ground. We'll eat the hay and the hay feeder extra feed, all of that, where pigs on that small space would basically just dig it up. So it's really important that they have enough space to munch and pigs get bored more than anything and they'll start digging because they're bored in a small space. But if they have something to graze on all winter, they're less prone to dig. Hi, big man. Hi. Hi. Mama sees you. So that's kind of my rule of thumb is once these guys start digging more, I feed them twice a day and I separate the bucks. The bucks don't need. Goodness! Did mom tickle your ear make you cough? Yeah. Bucks don't need grain twice a day. Pigs get it and then the bucks will start getting some hay. But these guys are the worst. You are! And you will just turn their hay feeder over and steal all their hay. A dear thinker. You are. No? Not sure. Look at that tail. Look at that swingy tail. They were just so happy. Hi, Timmy Piggle. You guys haven't really gotten to see them in a while. I think the boys are friendly. They're very stinky, but they're not super interested in me, which is nice. Uh, hello, stinky mints. I don't need you. Hello, Tony Pig. Yeah. Hi. How are you? See, um, I was asleep. They were each asleep in there uh, on each of the houses earlier. So she was asleep in that house and poor child was asleep in that house. I think she's thirsty. Coming down to get some water. See, that's what I'm doing, Mom. She likes to stick her whole face in the water. Do you like to stick her whole face in the water? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. That we're going down up there. If we walk really far, we're gonna need a nap. Slow, slow. Oh, there he goes. We do not need to harass Tony. The pigs will definitely be glad when they are out of rut. It's just early November, so we really have another month of rut before they will like calm totally down. And eventually uh, the girl's heat cycles will be a strong Nigerian cycle all year round. And so our problem that we have with that is that Tink and Bunny, now that we're not breeding Bunny and we're never gonna breed Tink, it's just gonna be somebody in heat all the time. Usually when it cools off, everybody calms down. Like it gets really cold. Yes ma'am, hello. 
uh, this one not getting pregnant this year. No, we're not. See, but mom, I think you'll appreciate that in March. I think you will. Hello. Hey, lovelies. We're coming to tree. They have loved this. It's just a scratching post. Okay. Sweet friends. I know you guys got all fluffy and now it's hot again. Nobody's sure. Nobody's quite sure. Are we, Pixie? They're not quite sure, Mom. 